Hello everyone, I'm Marion Olmo. I'm a third year PhD student from the IAS in France. I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to show you my work on encoding the cosmic web with GANs, which I'll be telling you about today. So first of all, a bit of context about large scale structures. Matter in the universe has accreted over time through gravitational collapse from what was a quasi homogeneous distribution to gradually form what is today a complex network made up of uh, virialized, over-dense halos connected by diffuse filaments and walls surrounding large, empty voids. Given that the structuration of matter is highly nonlinear, we rely on simulations to uh, accurately model it. These are typically n-body simulations with a high particle count. They are very costly to run, both in terms of time, computing power, and storage. We can take the example of Illustris, whose main simulation took three months to run, uh, clocking 19 million CPU hours and producing hundreds of terabytes of data. Um, as such, we want to see if machine learning can provide a fast alternative to these costly simulations. So we first build a, and train a network for fast generation of simulation-like datasets, and we then make use of this trained network to construct a simple autoencoder as a first step towards building a predictive model. So for our first network, we build a generative adversarial network, or GAN. Uh, so what is a GAN? Given a true set of images to train on, a GAN is made up of two competing networks. First, a generator, which takes in a small random vector and outputs an image that emulates those of a true set in order to fold the second network, a discriminator, which tries to differentiate the true images from the ones made by the generator. They train by competing against each other up to the point where the generator produces images that are virtually indistinguishable from the original ones. So in our work, we actually train both of our networks on two types of images. The uh, first type is uh, built from slices taken from a Gadget 2 3D n-body simulation, from which we compute a 2D density field that we log transform to make the structures stand out, as shown above. And the second type of images is also a set of 2D log density fields but this time they're built from uh, 2D simulations. Uh, both sets count uh, 76,000 images of uh, size 128 times 128 pixels. Uh, for variety, I'll be showing the GANs results for the images from 3D simulation slices and the AE's results for the images from 2D simulations. So now, onto the results. Uh, we compare a set of true simulation images with a set of images generated by the GAN. So first, the visual inspection shows that our GAN generates very convincing images. They're hard to tell apart by eye from the true images, and they reproduce features such as filaments and halos very well. To further confirm this, we want to compare the two sets using a series of statistical estimators. So first of all, the pixel PDFs to make sure that the density distribution in the images is on average well recovered. So we can see this is the case with the two curves overlapping almost perfectly, except at low densities for uh, the reason of uh, the log transformation that uh, we mentioned above. Um, we also looked at the mean density distributions over both sets. They overlap very well, which uh, ensures that our generated images not only resemble the originals, but they also follow the same distribution. We also look at the median power spectra to ensure that we recover the spatial frequencies well. Once more, it shows good agreement. And finally, we look at the peak counts which are local maxima of the density field and allow us to trace dense structures. They also follow a very similar distribution, so this is uh, very encouraging and uh, satisfying results. 
So we have a gun that uh, works very well, and we are now equipped with a functioning generator, which is a network that uh, takes in a reduced number of parameters, uh, 100 in our case, and decodes it to output a simulation-like image. image. So what, it, what it's doing technically is uh, providing a mapping from R100 to the space of simulation images exactly as a decoder would. Thus, we can uh, use our train generator as a decoder, and we just need to train an encoder to find the inverse mapping of the generator, and we'll have built ourselves a fully functioning autoencoder. So we do exactly that. We build and train such an autoencoder, and we get the following results. So these results are for the 2D simulations. Uh, they're for a test set that the autoencoder has uh, never seen during training. Um, so visual inspection shows that the structures are overall well recovered, though looking closely, we can see that a lot of the finer detail is rendered somewhat uh, randomly. This is still quite satisfactory though, given that the images were reduced to vectors less than a hundredth of their original size before being decoded again. Um, when we look at the statistical estimators that we mentioned uh, above for the gun, or I mean before, uh, we obtain pretty much the same results, but uh, we want an estimator to quantify how well our images are individually recovered. Uh, there are no good estimators for this as of now, so uh, we built our own estimator in the following way. So what we do is to first uh, threshold our image pairs, so simulation image and uh, the one that is found by the decoder after encoding, which we refer to as an uh, inferred image. And uh, we threshold these images at different points, as uh, shown here, which makes some structures appear. And for each threshold, we compute how well the structures of uh, each uh, image overlap with uh, its uh, linked pair. Uh, and we average this uh, overlap over the over a set of pairs using, uh, well, uh, quantifying the overlap with uh, a dice coefficient. And uh, this gives the plot to the right, which uh, gives somewhat disappointing results. Uh, looking on the left, however, we can see why. Although the thickest structures are very well recovered, the finer ones are much more random, as we saw before, which uh, decreases uh, very much the final score. However, it's uh, still quite satisfying given uh, the, the things we're working with. So we can conclude that uh, GANs are a very good alternative for uh, fast generation of simulation-like datasets. Uh, we have a working autoencoder that is easy to build uh, from a GAN and provides imperfect but uh, satisfactory results. We also have a series of statistical estimators to quantify agreement between input and output beyond visual inspection. This also gives us a basis of comparison for future work. And speaking of future work, uh, here's what we're looking to do. Uh, first, given our GAN's great performance in 2D, we can expect this to translate well to 3D, so we're looking to uh, try uh, again in three dimensions and apply this to the autoencoder as well uh, further down. But uh, using our working 2D autoencoder structure, we can now move on to use it for predictive purposes, for example. And uh, we already have encouraging results in 2D simulations. Uh, here is a sneak peek where uh, we train an autoencoder to uh, predict uh, z equals zero images when uh, giving it as input uh, the same uh, images, but at z equals three. 
And as you can see, it, uh, it actually finds them pretty well. So this is very encouraging. Um, that's it. Thank you very much.